Hello everyone and welcome to the course on simulating fluid flows using Python. Welcome to a different kind of setup. I am having this setup because of a technical glitch. And given the kind of discussion that we are going to have today, I think this would be enough for now. Uh, today we are going to look at how to write the one dimensional convection diffusion problem using the central differencing scenario. So the code that you are looking at right now, we would be looking at that. I would demonstrate you how that code works and if you had written your own solver, what would be the possible works? So without wasting any further time, let's get started. So the code that you are seeing right now that would be able to solve the 1D convection diffusion scenario. So it is quite similar to 1D conduction problem where we looked at the central differencing scheme with a generalized perspective. So as usual we always start by importing the required modules and in this case we need the numpy and the matplot libraries for the pi plot. So here I have imported them as np and plt as usual. After that, we define certain grid properties, that is the number of grid points, the domain size, and the grid spacing. So here you could change this. For example, the domain size, if you want it uh, exactly match the problem that we had looked at, you can change it to 0.5. The convection problem is always includes a convection velocity, and for that we are using the u velocity here. And note that I'm using the float 64 integer, sorry, the float 64 type rather than an integer because even though the magnitude is 1 meter per second but if it's something smaller it is always better to use a floating point type uh, data sets for the variables that you are using and float 64 it gives you more precision and more control over the variables. After that we define the density and the diffusivity that was given to us through the problem. Now once we have all these parameters that is these four parameters, the grid spacing, the velocity, the density and diffusivity, based on these we can calculate the picklet number and this is the local or the uh, grid spacing based picklet number that is the grid picklet number and after this I am just uh, writing a line that in the print statement I have double inverted comma that prints out this line as it is that is picklet number is followed by the value of the picklet number. So I am doing this just to ensure that uh, the picklet number is within the central differencing acceptable range that is the magnitude is less than 2 and we would see that if the magnitude is larger than 2 the code would just go crazy and you would get a very crazy kind of solution. So we will look at that. After that we define the iteration number or we initialize the iteration number as 0. Following this we initialize the temperature field. So we were given the boundary condition of 100 Kelvin at the left boundary and 500 Kelvin at the right boundary. So correspondingly we have indices of 0 for the left node and n minus 1 for the right node. And this is exactly copied and pasted for the t new variable that is used for the updated value of temperature. Thereafter we define the error related variables just like we had been doing before. So we want the epsilon to go of the order of 10 to the power of minus 8 and we initialize the numerical error to be 1.0. So here I open a new figure that I'm number as 10. So the figure 10 we would be using to plot the numerical error. Now the important part begins that first we check whether the numerical error is greater than epsilon and if it's not then it's fine but it usually would be until we would be running the calculations. So as long as the error is greater than uh, epsilon that is the threshold we do the calculations for i in the range of 1 to n minus 1 and here more importantly this n minus 1 is not included. So you might want to refer to the videos over here where I am talking more about the indexing system that is being used in Python. So based on the previous lectures you might want to recapitulate that the coefficients a w and a e now in the convection diffusion scenario they are given of this form that is a w is d which is gamma over h plus f 
that is rho into u. I'm sorry, I think this should be f by 2 and this should be f by 2 as well. So, AE is given as D minus FE by 2 and AW is given as D plus FE by 2. And correspondingly, we have AP being equals to AW plus AE. And finally, we can obtain the new value of temperature at the point P as AW into TW, that is the west grid point is corresponding to an iteration index of I minus 1 and AE times PE where the index of the east point is I plus 1 divided by AP. So this is nothing but the generalized formula that we had looked at for the finite volume formulation. So once we do these calculations for the loop, then we recalculate the numerical error. So before we recalculate it, we reset its value to 0 and then we write the usual expression that for the same number of points, the numerical error is nothing but the cumulative sum of the average differences or sorry the absolute differences so this particular loop we have looked at it a lot of times so this will just calculate the cumulative value of numerical error over all the grid points so once both of these steps are done we say that we have done one iteration that is why we write iterations being iteration plus one and we copy all the stuff that is stored in the t new variable and just paste it in the t variable so that we can do this iterative process over and over again. Finally, remember this plot figure 10. So we are using this figure 10 in order to plot the numerical error with iterations and we are saying that if the iteration is being divided by 500 and if the remainder is 0, so this particular sign that indicates the remainder of this division of iterations by 500. So for example, 500, 1000, 1500, this is true, but if it's anything else, this loop wouldn't be executed or this statement wouldn't be executed. So if this statement is correct, then we recall the figure 10 and we plot the iterations and the numerical error. So you will see what I mean here. So once that is done, once the numerical error is being plotted, then we do the usual plotting of the results. So here we define the x DOM that takes care of the position vector of all the load points and that is being stored in the x DOM. That is, you can think of this as the x coordinate of all the grid points. Then our solution is being plotted in a figure 11 that corresponds to x DOM being the x axis, the temperature being the y axis, the line width of the plot would be 2 pixels whereas the marker size would be 10 pixels where we would have a green line with cross symbols and a dashed line. So green dashed line with cross symbols. So this is something that you can modify based on your liking. I'm not really very finicky about this right now, but this would work for now. After that, we display the grid lines just so that the plot could look a little bit better. Then we do the labeling and provide a title to the plot. And finally, the plot is being shown on the screen. So this is pretty much the code that we would be using here. So let us dock this code back into the editor and we would try to run it from there. So now I've docked this code in the editor and we would use these set of parameters, these sort of values and see what the picklet number is and does or do we get a solution for that. So I just click on the run file here or you can use F5 for that matter. So once you click on that, the first thing is that you will get a picklet number is 0 0.09 or it is roughly 0 0.1. So that should be fine for the central differencing and you can see that because the speed of my computer is not very fast so the kind of repetitive plot that we are after that is hopefully it's visible on the screen now so you can see that after every 500 iterations we are seeing a continually decreasing plot of the error residual so this is very important from a technical perspective that we are using such a kind of plot here so now the solution has been converged as you can see here in around 6500 iterations and this is the temperature profile as a function of distance. So this is pretty good. This is what we expected that when the flow velocity is positive, a lot of points they would take the value of corresponding to the temperature of 100 that is the left boundary point. So this is fine. Now we can see what happens if we increase the velocity. Let us say this was at 0 0.1. So if I increase it almost 100 times, so if I increase the velocity to 50, 
we know that the picklet number would be around 10 and the solution would not work at least that's what the theory says so now if i hit the uh, run button the picklet number is 10 and we would see something going on so let us see what's happening so figure 10 corresponds to the error residual plot which is in the process of being shown up I'm not sure and figure 11 is the temperature profile now you can see very easily that uh, the temperature is zero but it's actually all over the place because the y-axis here it just corresponds to a very large number and the temperature profile is highly unbounded with lots of errors so this confirms the hypothesis that we have posed in the last lecture that the central differencing scheme would pretty much suck after a picnet number the absolute value being larger than 2 so hopefully this particular lecture would give you an idea of how to write this particular code and in the next lecture we would be back in the same kind of uh, classroom format and we would look at the upwind differencing scheme that would take care of at least this particular problem so until then please stay safe and take care and i'll see you in the next one